Hello everyone, this is Heliok here. Today I welcome you to my show, Computer Witness Day. Now in this show, we're gonna take a look into the fascinating science and technology that goes into almost magical device that we call computer. So come along for the ride. So today is episode one. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look into how and where we can find computers. So these are the two topics that we're going to take a look into. So it will be easier to understand if we start understanding these things in layers as they have multiple layers of operation. So uh, let's look at the basic layer that uh, we are familiar with. For example, we are very familiar with the idea of there being a input, there being a memory, there being a processor and then there being an output, whatever it may be. Now, these are the four, the most basic aspect of it. Now, let's look into the processor. That's the bread and jam of everything. So, let's look into it. Now, processor, what does it actually do? It's very simple in principle of operation sense. It takes input. You give it a command to do something to that input or calculate something based on it. And it gives you an output. Basically, it's a calculator where you tell it what to do. And that's why you many times in some circles hear the word computers are adding machines. And they are not wrong. It is on a very fundamental level. So that's what processor. A processor takes the information, processes it and spits it out. Memory is there to like, you know, record the information. So how does it do that? Like, is it magic? No. So let's go one layer deep. Now, if you go into this layer, be mindful it starts to get a bit more complex and this is why uh, computers at their fundamental level is so so big now big in terms of number so what we have is called logic gates all computer that you see are built on logics so they have logic uh, and logics can be so many varieties so many types and uh, some examples are here and or, or things of that nature so these logic gates are what does the processing so is either a is greater than b either a is equal to b something of this nature it's very simple arithmetic on a very basic level and the level i'm saying a basic it's so basic it's uh, literally runs on on or off so it's a uh, it goes to that level when you have logic gate now you might say okay i get the idea there is a logic gate that is doing the addition subtraction comparison or things of that nature how does that work now this is the deepest layer that we can go into of computers and that is the transistor that's the core aspect of a computer that's why you need a freaking phd to design those things and uh, Transistor in basic sense is just a simple switch which you can control on or off based on a signal. Basically, it has three pins and you tell it like, okay, yeah, either it's uh, going to be connected or disconnected based on the signal that is going into its third pin. And uh, this is why we, uh, you heard the word, uh, you keep hearing the word like, it's uh, running on binary, it's running on binary because that binary signal, that zero one, on or off is coming from this transistor the aspect of the transistor is very simple it's like i'm a switch which can be controlled nothing more than that you you could design a computer at uh, you know having a large switchboard but suffice to say uh, you're not gonna get a, even to a calculator level so because binary even if you to store a simple digit like uh, number eight number ten you might need multiple binary codes just to store what that means so we need something that does that on off and the faster they do the on off the quicker our computer gets that's why we have gigahertz now to understand gigahertz here's a scale and in simplest sense in simplest sense all it is is just how fast it's doing its cycle there are like it takes a data process it in a cycle and then does multiple times that it cannot just like take a data think upon it and then process it and then come up with the idea then recalculate it it does it in cycles and if you program it right it does the right thing if you program it wrong it does the wrong thing on the deepest level so we have transistor on top of that we have gates 
logic it on top of that we have what we what you and i refer to as computers or processor for this instance so that's how and full disclosure computers are as close to magic as humans have ever gone to put things in context computers have literally taken centuries of human knowledge innovation in science physics chemistry quantum mechanics and everything that you can think of including lasers to freaking make them like they are the most complex things we ever create literally they are so complex they will make rocket science look easy and i'm not joking about that like rocket barely has few thousand things and a normal processor like this processor this processor they could have somewhere as little as millions to as high as billions and we are still keep going higher and higher so as you can see like the lo the simplest level it's quite simple it's just a transistor that makes a logic gate that logic gates are connected in an interesting way that gives us the language that we use i i mean binary language that we use then you have a compiler then you have a lot of other things this is starts to get complicated this is why uh, when you hear come somebody studying computer science this is what they are studying how this logic gate layer interacts with the software and this is the core level like if you understand this you can actually make a computer so aside from it being magical then comes the question okay it's a magic almost where is it so suffice to say that we all know it's everywhere in our day-to-day -day life we know our smartphones our smartwatch everything has it now i'll give you some simpler examples of this a washing machine Yes, that also has computer in it. Now, I specified the computer has a very simple operation. It takes data based on what you have told it. It processes it and gives out the useful result. So why a washing machine would need something like that? Very simple. Let's say you put clothes on your washing machine in auto. Wherever you see the word automatic washing machine or auto, this is what they mean. Whenever you put clothes on the drum of a machine, it runs the motor. There could be other methods also. So it runs the motor, takes the, it already knows what a blank drum should wait. So it, uh, programmers will program it. Okay, so if it's empty, the motor should take this much current. So it's like, okay, let's say one amp. It's like motor is running on one amp. So you put clothes in. Now it takes 1.5 amps. So it knows that uh, it has a load of 0.5 amps. On that, some engineer would have pre-calibrated it. It's like, okay, if you detect 0.5 of amps and uh, somebody has told it that it's uh, washing wool, use this much water. So it will keep the tap open for this long. And it will wait until the, it will run, once the water is full, it will run it and see whether it's matching the criteria. If it's not, let's say the flow of water is too little, it will open the valve for longer. And as you can see, so suffice to say, even our day-to-day -day life, something as simple as washing machine can have use and need computers to make it more effective, more efficient. Something as simple as a battery charger, like a lithium ion battery charger that I'm going to use for this DSLR or you might have uh, have in your phone and phone chargers. They also have a lot of computing power into them. Not a lot, but they have computation in them. What they do is like based on the voltage, if they calculate whether how, what is the state of charge so they don't blow it up. Lithium ion battery really does not like to be overcharged or over discharged or anything to it, it just explodes, it just has a tendency of blowing up. So the sole reason we can use uh, lithium ion nowadays so effectively with our mobile phones and car is that we figured it out how they work based on microcontrollers and microprocessors. Now microcontroller and microprocessor are just the same name of computer, it's just that what we nowadays have is very advanced computers. It's like the general purpose computer that we have nowadays that I'm gonna edit this video on or uh, you're gonna use a smartphone to watch this video on or something like that is so advanced nowadays that to make it simple we call uh, simple circuits that are either in camera lens for vibration correction or reduction or in battery chargers we call them microprocessor microcontroller things of that nature so if you see like uh, something uh, equipment uh, electrical equipment saying like you know this lift is uh, microcontrolled or uh, the, you know this lighting has a uh, uh, computer control that's what they mean they have a processor that they programmed and it does the thing that it needs to do at that time so 
where are computers well everywhere including inside us um, if you have any implant uh, as simple as a pacemaker to something more complex like an insulin pump or a hearing aid all of them have computers in them especially uh, given the fact that conditions can change so you cannot just run on run these things on simple clock system like okay clock it do this this it won't like uh, a heart is a complex system our hearing system is a very complex system all those things consider we need computers to make our life better so as you can see it's literally and figuratively everywhere so let's call it a day today and uh, we're gonna discuss more about this in episode 2 and I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and as I hope you to see you next time thank you and if you like the content please like share subscribe and press the bell icon because I upload video every weekday so thank you